Wayne Rode is on the line with us, libertarian commentator. He's got a new book out. It's called The Ultimate Obama Survival Guide, How to Survive, Thrive, and Prosper During Obamageddon. Rootforamerica.com, of course, Wayne's site. Wayne, welcome back. Hey, Tom. How are you? I'm fine. Happy tax day to you. Yeah, well, that's why I put the book out today. My book actually came out today. I picked this date uh, several months ago. I said it's a memorable date, and for the first time, we'll give people something to look forward to. I agree. It's so, you know the today, money on tax day. Today is today is the day that we have an opportunity to say yes. I am proud to be an American. I am proud to support this nation, and I am proud to that they that this nation has provided the opportunity for me to make a living, and that I can give something back to it. I won't even argue with that. I think it's great. That's why I wrote the book, to help you make more money so you can pay more taxes. Okay. <laughs> so uh, what is Obamageddon? Obamageddon is what I think is happening to the economy. It's horrible. My book lays out the case that, uh, and by the way, it's not for rich people. It's, it's for everyone. I think the economy is getting worse for the average middle class person. It's, it's just wiping out the middle class. It's well, terrible you know, out there. I'm not a rich I'm, guy. I'm, I'm, I'm with you. You know, I wrote a book called Screwed. I mean, 30, we've got 32 years now of Reaganomics. It's an absolute <laughs> failed experiment. And, and uh, you know, I, we, here we had, you had 40 years of Keynesian economics and have built the strongest middle class in the history of the United States. The only three decades where we had GDP above 3% in the history of the United States were the decades of the 50s, 60s, and 70s, and, and consistently. And then Reagan came along and started taking apart the American working person, the, the American middle class. Unionization has gone from you know 30%, nearly 30%, down to about 8% of our uh, private workforce. We've gone from being a net creditor nation to the world when Reagan came in to a net to the largest creditor nation of the world, to being the largest debtor nation in the world now after 32, 33 years of Reaganomics. We've gone from being the largest exporter of manufactured goods when Reagan came into office to being now the largest importer of manufactured goods. In fact, our number one export is gasoline, which maintains high gasoline prices for us and huge profits for the oil companies, which don't pay any taxes. Um, I, you know, I get it. I'm with you, Rain, uh, Wayne. The, the, the average American is totally screwed. I just don't see how this has anything to do with President Obama. Well, well, by the way, my new book, The Ultimate Obama Survival Guide, isn't just putting blame on Obama. First of all, it's 450 pages, and it's mostly solutions, not blame. And number two, it's not just blaming Obama. It blames Bush. It blames even my hero, Reagan. I loved Reagan. Well, you know, I've read part of your book today, and, and, I, and you were, you're, you're in your book you're referring... And every president in the last, you know, modern history spends way more than comes in. And that, in the long run, that destroys your country, that destroys your people's assets, it destroys our ability to collect Social Security one day, that the system's going to run out because we're going bankrupt. That's my point. It's not no. just Obama. A, Social Security is fine, and you and I both know that. And B, we have been, you know, we've been having a, a deficit ever since the George Washington administration. You want to have the ability for people to invest in the United States. If countries that don't sell treasuries um, are countries that are in trouble. Well, let yeah. me ask you these two points, okay? You've just made a key point that you're blaming Reagan for everything bad going on. We both agree the middle class is disappearing. We both agree it's become more and more difficult and stressful on middle class people to pay the bills, but we're disagreeing about how it happened. And so you're saying Reagan, and I'm saying, well, there was no Reagan in Italy or Spain or Portugal or all the bankrupt countries of Europe, Greece, Cyprus. They Every one of those countries you named does not control their own currency. Model. Spend, 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 big government, big unions, free mm. health care for all, and they're all bankrupt. No, you're wrong, so Ryan. You're, you're wrong, Wayne. You're wrong. You're just simply wrong. You, you, you're, you're, you're clearly talking about something you're not informed about. None of those countries control their own sovereign currency. They are not sovereign nations economically. We are. You cannot draw a parallel between them, number one. Number two, none of those countries are bankrupt. What has happened is that the, because they no longer control their own currency, you have automatic stabilizers in virtually all developed countries where when the economy goes in the tank people and people lose their jobs, they go from being taxpayers to tax consumers. In other words, they get unemployment benefits. And the European Union, through, you know, in their infinite wisdom, when they put together the EU and they said, okay, we're all going to do this common currency, nobody can have a, uh, a debt uh, that's greater than 3.4 percent of their of their Correct. GDP, which Correct. is insane, because what that means is if you go into a recession and your taxpayers start becoming tax consumers, your debt is going to go up, which is normally how it works. And then when the economy comes back, 
you know, when the economy comes back and everything's fine again, people are working again, they're now taxpayers, and then you pay back down that debt. We've done that over and over and over again. Every country in Europe has done that over and over again. It's how economies have worked for, for hundreds of years. But with this 3.4% limit, what, 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 these, what, what the EU is saying to these countries is, you cannot pay those unemployment benefits to those people because it's going to, it's going to cause your debt to go beyond 3.4%, and so you're going to have to start selling off pieces of your country to the banksters. I mean, this is just a total screw job of these people. And it's got nothing to do with the United States. You and I are in agreement about what horrors the the banksters of of the EU are and the banksters of the IMF and the banksters of Wall Street in the United States. But here's what I don't get. Wayne, you're... That's where Occupy and Tea Party actually draw some parallels. Neither one of us can stand the banksters on Wall Street and the the, the guys who basically tell countries that you're going to now suffer. You know, I'm I'm glad you, you, you you and I are both fans of Elizabeth Warren, but you know, there is $32 trillion stashed in offshore tax havens by wealthy people, by, by billionaires and multi-billionaires, many of them Americans, so that they can avoid paying any taxes, much right, less their fair share tax. Back, so you lower tax rates when they bring the money back. You can't get it back. Here's the only thing I'll say to you, Tom, about this topic. My daughter goes to Harvard, and she is brilliant. She's a straight A-plus student at Harvard. She now goes to Oxford, and she's a straight A student at Oxford. She's coming back for a senior year at Harvard in the fall. And if you told her that you study all day, you sacrifice, you're not dating, you're studying, 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 you're not partying, you're not drinking, you're not doing drugs, you're getting straight A's and A-pluses at Oxford and Harvard, arguably the two best colleges in the world. But from now on, that's not fair. We're going to take your A away and give you a C, and we're going to raise all the F students who party and drink and have sex all night and don't study for their exams. We're going to give them C's instead of F's, and we're going to equalize everyone. She'd stop working, Tom. This experiment doesn't work. So you're so, so A, a, like I do a you're if suggesting... You you're going to take 70% of my money. I wouldn't do it. I'd leave the country, or I'd retire, or I would just live life where I push my five-year-old in the swing and, and put in nine hours a day, not 16. Okay, so, so we've learned two things here. We've learned, number one, that your daughter doesn't learn for learning's sake. She doesn't give a rat's ass about learning. She's learning because somehow the grade is meaningful to her, right? She doesn't, she doesn't really care about learning. No, no, she cares about learning. But if oh, you took the well, grade away, you just said if you took her grade away that she would stop. What's that? I missed that. What? You just said if, if you took her, if you reduced her grade from, a, from an A to a C, she would stop. Uh, there you know. has to be some incentive in life. For a businessman like me, it's money. For a person in school, it's the joy of knowing you are number one in your class. You just won the John Harvard Award. Top 5% of all the students at Harvard. Take that away. No one's going to study God Harvard. bless her. So, is, so you're saying that she's doing all this stuff just to get those rewards. Listen, I, you know, you I love learning for the sake of the learning. Competition is what measures success. But, but nobody but, works hard to be in the middle of the pack. But Wayne, you're you're throwing a straw man out here, and you know it. What's that? I, you know, I started out by saying there's 32 trillion dollars stashed offshore. What we have, the 400 most profitable corporations in the United States last year, one quarter of them paid no no taxes at all. That's 20, wrong. That's 25 percent. I agree with that, by the way. And, 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 and we've got these billionaires with this money. Well, no, you said you throw this example back at me of, uh, well, my daughter wouldn't, you know, as if, I'm, as if I want to take away, what, her grades? No, but I'm saying to you, and I hear the music, so I'll be off. What I want to say to you is the only way to get corporations to pay more in taxes is to lower the tax rates. They don't need to hide from the high rates. That's the way you get them to pay more. But out of the 34 countries in the world, we're n- number two from the bottom in terms of what we collect from these corporations. I know, but we're number one how high corporate tax rates are. Lower oh, the nonsense. rate, lower the deductions. And Hang on just a second. This is the Tom Hartman Program. Wayne Root, you can read all about it at rootforamerica.com. Wayne, we will live to argue another day. <laughs> you got it. His new book, The Ultimate Obama Survival Guide.